What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Dialed In. Today, I'm bringing on one of my good friends, Alex. He's taking over the TikTok scene, and uh, we'll wait for him to hop in. What's good, everybody? What's good? <clears throat> oh, we're good. A little stiff, but we're good. <clears throat> what up, what up? All right, we're good. Yeah, my bad, guys. I couldn't find I couldn't find my uh, my phone charger, but we're good. We're good now. What's up, Alex? What's good? How's it going, bro? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. How about you? Just chilling. I was supposed to take a rest day today, but I still train, so I'm exhausted right now. Damn. How how many days in a row do you train? Like, I usually go off of just kind of how I'm feeling. If I had to guess, I'd probably say like seven to eight in a row until I like get kind of gassed like today i felt like shit and then i just like had a little i was gonna do like like weak point work like pump training but it's like a little week you know and take like the active rest day and then i was like yeah. i took my pre-workout went to the gym i was like uh, i'm gonna just do straight up workout so damn how, how do you get away with doing so many days in a row do you think if you didn't have pre-workout or kind of any kind of like stim you'd still push through it or no um i don't know i feel like for me this the way i train it's not as much like taxing i think all my like my nervous system it's more just like i guess my muscles repair and i get like a good amount of sleep um but i'm not like super active active like the only activity i do in a day is probably just me lifting in the gym like i don't like do a lot of other shit you know what i mean yeah, yeah. no i got you well i mean if all you're doing is working out you probably don't need that much energy anyway bro it's only like an hour and a half out of your day yeah but but either way, let's start it off. So, guys, I just want to say, first off, thank you for having him on. You know, I don't know if this is a podcast or a live, whatever you want to call it. Either way, thanks yeah. for having him on. Um, so, this is definitely half my followers, half your followers. So, for my <laughs> followers who have no idea who you are, just tell them a little bit about who you are. All right. So, I am – my name is Alex Eubank, 20 years old, from Maryland. I've been working out – that's bodybuilding, I guess. I, the beginning wasn't really bodybuilding. It was just kind of fun, but I guess now it's bodybuilding for four years. I've been training for four years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I make a lot of fitness content. My YouTube and TikTok's been popping off the past few months, trying to make a name. You know, I just got picked up by Raw Gear and uh, Rise Supplements. So we've been good things. Big things been happening. But yeah. Love that, bro. And you're, you're 19, 20. I know you're pretty young. I'm 20. Yeah, I'm 20 now. But that's wild. You're about to be making thousands in commission alone. You don't even got to have a job. You can live off that like most bodybuilders do. Facts. That's what I'm hoping. Getting getting a little bit. I get a little bit from YouTube too, which helps because yeah, yeah. my YouTube's been new. I've been doing YouTube for like a year now, so yeah, yeah. got all that stuff going. But yeah, because no. we're going off to Texas in like a few months. So nice. Oh, so I know this full house is going to happen. That that's officially happening pretty soon. You guys are all going to move in together. Yep. the The plan is to have uh, Rise. I don't know, like you know, like the CEO of Rise, Nick, good friend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they'll they'll probably they'll be most likely like paying, like covering the house, like the the rent and stuff like that. And then in return, we'll be like athletes doing stuff for Rise, helping promote them, and like Bro. just making fitness content with the boys. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll be definitely flying people out there. Like, we'll definitely have to get you out there. Bro, I'm down. Let's do it. Yeah, it'd be mad. That's wild. Fun, dude. I mean, that's kind of cool that that's the first brand. Cause I, I mean, unless you know another brand, I've been in the fitness industry a while, and I've yet to see a single person be like, yo, let's go have a fitness house. Like, when, when have yeah. you ever heard that? Like, I get it. There's like fashion houses and like random shit, but like, I've never seen like a bodybuilding house. You know, like, that's dope. Yeah. Especially, they, uh, I, think I, I think I saw the CEO rising here somewhere. Either way, but that's dope, guys. Congrats on that. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's going to be so fun. Dude, I can't wait to get the hell out of Maryland, bro. I can't stand it here. No one does, like, what I do. So I feel like being around like-minded individuals, it'll just pop off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, sometimes you got to make the best of it, bro. I mean, because cause where I'm from, it's me and then Bradley Martin. We're the only two fitness people to ever come out of anywhere in this general area. So it's really? like, no one even knows Bradley Martin's from here. They think he's from L.A. No one knows he's from Northern California. So like, oh, it's yeah, just, really? yeah. you, you, you got to make the best of it, man. Damn, yeah. bro. Brock, Brock has a whole ass army in here, bro. <laughs> Does he? Right, I didn't even see what they're saying. What are they saying? It's just Brock. It's just Brock, it's just Brock hella times. It's crazy. For Brock's, I love Brock. I'll have to get him to come out to the, to the swole house too. To come. Bro, he, he's like the UK or something, bro. I don't even know if you can get them. He's man. Australia. I'm pretty sure he's oh. Australia. Is he? Oh, okay, yeah. okay. There's such a huge yeah. fitness following in Australia. Like the second majority of my followers come from Australia. Yeah, I, I've noticed a trend because, like, you know, I already know, like, my job is, like, I coach people all over the world, right? It's, like, online. Yeah. And I'd say the last month or so, they've all been from Japan and Australia. And I was like, bro, where's, like, the American clients? Like, I, yeah. I, it, like, I don't know, bro. Australia, I'm getting some people swole out there. So de definitely excited for that. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, let, let's get into some questions. If you see a question here you want to answer, feel free to stop me. If not, then I got, like, 20 that I thought were relatively good, and I want to go over those. We'll go over both. So 
if you guys got any questions, drop them in here. We'll get to those. If not, I'm going to answer this first. But uh, I guess the first one, just because I want to know as well, and I want to put in here, but uh, what age did you start lifting? Like, what was the very first time you ever started training? I would say I always was super big in, like, elementary school and middle school. When we used to do, like, the fitness pacer tests and stuff like that. I always wanted to be the kid who did the most push-ups because I like being, like, I don't know. I like being, like, the last one doing them. So I always did, like, push-ups growing up, like, little calisthenics stuff. And then when I turned yeah. 16, I started watching these guys called Bar Brothers on YouTube. And they're, like, calisthenics based. They do, like, all the cool stuff, like handstand push-ups, front levers, muscle-ups. And I was like, that's so dope. So I bought yeah. a workout program from them when I was when I was 16. So what is that? That's, like, my sophomore, junior year of high school. And I did calisthenics for like six months. So I never touched a weight for my first six months. I got super lean. Yeah. A lot of my like transformation pictures on my TikTok and I was like cut or my beginning was just off of body weight alone. And then I started just going to the gym more a little bit, adding in a little bit of like equipment and weights. And then like my, I remember my Instagram feed started getting flooded with bodybuilder. And I was like, oh, I want to look like that. And then that's when yeah. I just started hitting like weight weights. So 16. Yeah. Damn, bro. So you got to solve like quality four years pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Beginning, you... I really didn't know what I was doing for a little bit. But I'd say, like, weight weight training, probably, like, almost four. Like, weight, weight. Just yeah. weight. Yeah, that's crazy. No, because I know a lot of you guys have asked me how old I am. I'm 26. I'm not 20. You know, I started lifting when I was 16. So this would have been my 10th year. I didn't get to touch a single weight all of 2019. I was out of commission, just injured. So Really? What, you know, what injury was it? What did you have? I, the, long story short, man. So I was in prep to go to nationals, right? Like, I was trying to turn pro. That was the be best I ever looked. I was 15 weeks out. I've been prepping a couple weeks. Yeah. And I was, like, I was super strong. So strong as I've ever been. And I was squatting 405. Uh, I was on my Damn. fourth fourth working set. Uh, I think it was on, like, rep five or six, somewhere in there, just puddle of sweat. And my right foot, like, slipped a little bit. Like, I felt it slip. And then, like, my core just couldn't handle it. And, like, I collapsed. And it crushed my neck. And uh, yeah, so that took me out all of 2019. And then on top of that, when I was injured, I found out I had an autoimmune disease. So kind of like Chris Bumstead, like a like an immune system issue, right? Yeah. So I got sick super easy and I was injured. So like, bro, I lost everything. Sponsors kicked me off, lost my job, lost everything in 2019. So, you Dude. know, guys, don't ever take lifting for granted because I had everything. I was getting paid to compete, paid to travel, and I lost yeah. it. So I would never take training, you know, for granted ever <laughs> i'll never do it again. bro i'm sorry yeah. to hear about that that's awful oh, that's dude. good i mean you i'm cool now. now oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like 70 percent. that's just why i hadn't been competing like that's what everybody knew me as like i went from full-time competing <laughs> to like full-time coach yeah. but like in the future i'd like to do both but you know shit shit happens um all right one more thing branching off the workout split um so out of all the workout splits you tried what is the number one that you like Ooh, that's a good one or what is oh. your current either one both are fine. One, one I, I like the most is I'll do – because push-pull legs gets mad boring to me. So I do, I'll do i do push-pull leg the first three days. Then my fourth day, I would do chest and back together, like a yeah. little old-school type vibe. And then I would do okay. shoulders and arms the next day, and then I would do legs. Or sometimes if I, like, didn't hit – because I don't like doing three body parts one workout. I maybe do, like, shoulders and biceps and a little bit of triceps, and I'll tack on the triceps at the end of my leg day. Or, like, uh, I'll do, like, legs in the afternoon, and then, like, before I go to sleep, I'll do my triceps or something. Um, but that was probably my, my favorite split. Nice. I enjoyed that. Yeah. So, Good what would you – would you ever switch up your workout split? So, let's say – I know we discussed it before, but let's just say – let's say you did hire me, and I did prep you for your show coming up in, let's say, six months. You know, yeah. So, if I give you a different workout split that I thought was better, would you want to do that, or would you want to stay with what you've been staying with this entire time because it's something you're comfortable with? Well, I mean, if you'd be the coach, I'd probably do whatever – I'd do what you would would think because I don't know anything about the whole comp competing stuff, so I'd definitely go with what you would – I'd be willing to change it, of course. Definitely. Yeah, I was just curious because sometimes it does happen. I bring it up to people like, no, if it's not push pull legs, I'm not doing it. I will not, yeah. I will not do it. I love trying different splits out. I'm always trying to see what works best for me. Like, I, I'm, I always know I need to bring up certain weak points, but, like, I don't know. Like, I know I need to bring up my arms, for example, but, like, I just love training, like, my chest and back more than anything else. So, like, I, I'll I'll slack on it at the end of my workouts. Like, if I'm supposed to go push day, I'll do more chest yes. and delts than I do triceps. You know what I mean? That's why they're probably lacking. But. All right. Also, can you, can you silence the haters? You are completely natural. From at least what you told me, you told me you were natural. So, yeah. <laughs> you, look, yeah, you look pretty natural, guys. Just because he's, like, genetically gifted. Like, I'm not saying you're small. You're not small at all. But I yeah. think that you know, people get the misunderstanding that, like, just because you look absolutely amazing with a pump, that, like, you look like that 24-7. Like, guys, mm -hmm. when we're that jacked and that shredded, assuming you're not, like, a week out from the show, like, you look like that for, like, 20 minutes, you know, and the pump's gone. So, it's like, yeah. you know. 
when and like just being like like super lean like when i was in my leanest like this summer like a few months ago like when i was tan i had that good tan i got like a good skin tone in the summer and yeah. the, just the leanness and i don't know it, it just hits different i got like pretty good uh insertions i guess especially like my chest so i just look way better when i'm like 170 and like through pictures with the pump than when i do like when i'm bulked up like 185 or something like that and yeah that i'm 100 percent natural i actually have the worst body dysmorphia probably i'm always like talking to the um, school like the small chat boys i'm like bro me and floors be talking we're like bro this sucks dude screw this natty shit like we need to hop on some i always get tempted but i'm scared i have like awful anxiety so i always get, I always get scared like if i did hop on something if like i feel like the, the idea of side effects would freak me out i have like a panic attack my anxiety is awful yeah, because I, I can't speak for everybody, guys. Uh, Patrick, I saw your question. I'll get to that in a second. I got you. But um, just branching off to what you said. So the biggest thing is, guys, like, I don't, I don't know if it's social media. I don't know if it's just the way, like, we've grew, like people grown up a different generation. But it's like people want to hop on gear so early. And I, I can't speak for Alex. I don't know what his DMs are like. But for me, more people know me as a coach than a competitor. I guess they feel more comfortable asking me the weird-ass questions. And, man, a couple days ago, I had – it still said high school in his bio. I don't know what high school was. It said high school in his bio. So he had to be like 17, 18. Yeah. He's like, yo, bro, I'm on my second cycle of test and trend. I'm trying to be like my idol something, uh, somebody and Johnny Skywalker. I was like, John what? Skywalker? I was about to say yeah. that. I was like, what? What are you talking about, bro? Like, that's crazy. And it happens all the time. And I was like, you're natural. Look how sick you look. Like, yeah, you're not super massive. You couldn't turn pro like tomorrow. But yeah. in general, you know, like, it's it's quite wild. And yes, I do reply to DMs, Jackson. It's just, uh, you might not get the response that you want, but I definitely respond to most yeah. when I can. You, you might not like it. Uh, uh, but uh, Patrick asked a question. Um, I believe he said, when is the correct time to switch out of push-pull legs to like something else? Um, so I'll answer it. You could answer it. But just in my opinion, from my outside point of view, all my competitors, I don't have any of my competitors doing push-pull legs. Now, my regular lifestyle clients, I do have some of them doing it. But from a bodybuilding standpoint, um, especially whether you're enhanced, whether you're natural, a lot of them do do really well training, let's say chest and tricep, back and bicep, legs, shoulders, arms separately. And sometimes I have them do chest twice a week. So it depends what they're lacking. But I really feel that a lot of people do push pull legs and they have way too much volume on their push on their first uh, push day. So now yeah. they come to their second push day and they're not recovered and they continue going through that cycle over and over again. And before they know it, they're not growing, they're not recovering. And it's just so common. So yeah. I don't know, man. It's just, just my opinion. Um, yeah, I guess all I had to say about that. But yeah, no, I, I definitely feel that. Like today, when I, I today I had a push day technically, and I felt I felt a lot weaker in my in my chest because I think I hit chest a little bit too hard on my last yeah. one because uh, my split is different. I think I've just been doing like push pull like again for the past like month or two. But um, but no, I, I definitely feel that. All right, all right. Hold on, got a couple questions. Then we'll, we'll if you see a good question, you want just pick it out. All right, all right. I saw Zay, okay. Zay send a chat. I'm gonna be going. I'm gonna see Zay and Riser in a week and a half or something. Going down there to collab. Is uh, who else is going in the fit house? Sorry, I I don't know who all. Is, I know it's you and uh, what's it called Flores. So, but who all is there? So the guys that we have like ready like anytime as soon as like Rise is ready for it would be like me, Brandon Clark, Flores, uh, Stony Fit, Jay Lane. Um, we're trying to get Joe in it officially. I'm, I'm going to talk Joe into it. Like, I've been talking to Joe. Joe's just dealing with school right now. That's Joe's biggest thing. But Joe and Zay, definitely, I want Joe and Zay, like, out there. It's, it's, I'm yeah. going to try to get them out there. You know, they'll be fine, if anything. Uh, nice. Eunice is going to be, like, visiting a lot. He's just – he's got he has, he has to live at home because he's, like, the man of his house. Yeah. And then Hattie is going to be coming once he finishes up his last project at uh, at his work, and he's going to he's gonna move out. So, Damn, bro. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole ass squad right there. I oh, yeah. If you guys can't make it with that whole squad, man, you're doing something wrong. Like you, you exactly. Have, you have to. You have. Yeah. To. Oh, oh, one point. Uh, question branching off of that. Are you going to make a separate YouTube account like for just that? Sorry, YouTube, TikTok, whatever. Like, are you gonna have like a swole house like page for that? Or are you guys probably. Just keep doing your own content just to occasionally like, collab or something? We'll we'll probably we'll all keep doing our own stuff, but we'll probably like once we've ha we have like an official date when we're moving out, we'll probably like make. The, uh, the TikTok and the YouTube like a month beforehand just to hype it up a little bit. And then we'll yeah. start, we'll definitely be dropping like YouTube videos and like doing challenges with everyone. Nice. But uh, we'll all keep doing like vlogs and stuff like that. It'll be so much more content. That's the thing. Like I'll be uploading probably every other day once we go out there. Cause you're yeah. with the boys. Like we can just do stupid ass eating challenges, like stupid stuff. So for most of you guys there, um, assuming I don't know who's going to be in school, who's not. So 
would you guys say that you're kind of like taking that plunge? Like you're leaving everything, you know, like your hometown, you're leaving, you know, whatever jobs you guys may have and just, you're putting it all into that. Is that, is that pretty correct for everybody? I would say so. My, my parent, like I tried, I tried, I wanted to drop out my, my dad and my mom don't really want me to. So I told them that I would do like online school, like, like two classes, maybe every semester, like very minimal, just so yeah, I could, like, you know, huh? I said, yeah, you can definitely pull it off. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, th I think just cause if you ever want to have like a full-time job plus that, like you at bare minimum, you do have to have a college degree nowadays. Like even mm -hmm. if you don't have a master's or something, it's like really hard. So you definitely need to have at least your bachelor's, like get it in business or something. So you can learn how to open your own business or something like something basic. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what, that's what I'm doing. I'm making sure like before I go out and have like a decent amount of money, like saved up, <laughs> make sure that I got like a decent income from all of like the influencer stuff. Cause I mean, I've been making probably a little bit more money now than I was at like, a, like the minimum wage job I did beforehand. Oh, I'm sure. Just, and just and, and you're having fun. And you're having fun doing it. Exactly. It's not like I'm, I'm working. Different. Yeah. And I know, like, once we go to the small house, that things will probably take off even more. I, f I feel like it would it just make sense. Like having a, a fitness house, like it just, you know, everyone yeah. being all there, all the content. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to like quit school and like go all in on the whole fitness influencer crazy, thing. I, w I wish you guys the best of luck. I'm definitely gonna have to visit that for sure. That's dope. Oh, hundred percent, bro. Definitely. If, if I wasn't coaching hundreds of people all over the world, bro, I'd definitely hop in. But you know, I, I, ain't, yeah. got, I ain't got that kind of time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is it true that most fitness people in the industry don't care if you're natural or not? No, most people in the fitness industry who are on gear do not care if you're on gear. The only people who typically question it are typically younger people, um, people who are natural. I'd say typically teenagers are the most, the ones who like, are like, is that guy natural? Is he natural? Yeah, like, yeah, I agree. Show, yeah, but if you're at a show and I'm pumping up next to someone, I'm not in my head like, I wonder if he took more trend than me. I wonder if that guy's not like, no one, no one says that. It doesn't happen. You know, like it, it's just not common. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like people in the, in like the fitness industry, once you like, like the actual fitness industry, I don't think people give a shit at all. Cause like the majority of, of a lot of the influencers in the industry have, have taken something. And um, yeah. I feel like the only people who definitely care is like the younger, the high schoolers and stuff. Cause they're like, they see it as being such a bad thing because like it's yeah. illegal and they're like, Oh, like you can't take that shit like that. But like, once you're like actually into the industry, you've been, you know, you know, like the ropes, like it's not really that big of a deal. Like everyone's still, I, mean, I have so much respect for people who who take gear. Like I don't think it's like awful at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I can I can vouch for it because guys, I'm not natural. I've never claimed to be natural. I haven't been natural in years. I mean, I've been natural for like two years because I haven't taken shit. But just in general, like people think it's like this magic pill. And like, don't get me wrong, the the best thing about it, in my opinion, it's not building mass. It's none of that because it's not. You still have to eat, but it's the recovery. So you know, let's you know, you said that you train like six days in a row and you kind of like you know you're getting gassed out, whatever. So. Yeah. When you're enhanced, I typically say that that's probably the most noticeable thing is like you can keep going and going and like your hour workout could turn to a two hour workout and you re recover so quickly like that. That's my experience. It's not like yeah. you, you don't have roid rage. You don't have all these crazy things that doesn't happen. But at the same time, I have people in my DM saying they're pissing blood. I have people in my DM saying they oh. send me their blood work and I'm not a doctor. I know how to read blood work. I learned it years ago, but I've seen some blood work, man, of a 19 year old kid who I haven't even heard from, bro, he might have died. That's how bad his blood work was. He he took like a 16-week Sarman D-ball cycle. So he just took a bunch of orals and he was popping that shit like Skittles. No liver support, no PCT. And bro, like his liver was dead. His kidneys were dead. His testosterone was gone. I was like, this shit happens all the time. So oh. I guess that that's why the gear has such a bad stigma to it because people die occasionally from it. And like people just stick with that one story, you know, like it'll be like a 19 year old kid or 20 year old kid who gets liver failure and dies or kidney failure and dies. And like, that's all they're going to know. Yeah. So, that's, that's the worst part. Anything used properly, you're going to be all right. Um, hold on guys. I'm trying to pick a good question. Damn. That's mad scary. And whoever asked that, I saw it for a second. Can you get side effects even with proper coaching? Yes. I get, let, let's just say, for example, guys, I'm not, I'm not on drugs right now. I'm just saying, but let's say, I took a certain cycle. I grew. I felt perfectly fine. Now, I'll give that exact same cycle to Alex. Let's say he got every side effect in the book. It happens all the time. His genetics are not my genetics. Like, it, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it, it doesn't. He could take this much and, you know, get acne, get roid rage, get whatever, you know, have a limp ass noodle. Like, anything could happen. So, it doesn't matter who your coach is. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, let's see. I feel like if like me and Flores were talking because Flores has such a high training volume, he doesn't take like any supplements. Like he rarely takes any supplements. He trains fasted in the morning for like two, three hours. He's like twice a day. If oh, he was great. to take gear, bro, I feel like he would just his training style and ethic and him being able to recover quicker if he was on gear. We were talking about that. Like I, I bet you Flores could easily do so good if he like. 
compete, he competed, and then like train the same way he does. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what's crazy though? Like what's genuinely crazy? So I've coached natural people. Um, I haven't coached too many people through their first cycle because like that's too much liability on my end. So if they've used it before, I typically help them with it. But it's like their first time. Like it's just not something I feel comfortable with. But yeah. I've seen people like my own friends train naturally for like five, six years, kind of like Flores, right? Training for a long mm-hmm. period of time. Amazing genetics look great. And they hop on gear and I don't know what happens. They hop on gear and they look like dog shit after. Really? It's like the body just doesn't accept it. Like they get bigger, yes, but they lose their like aesthetic look. Yeah, they like the, yeah. soft. They don't look as hard and grainy. And like, I don't know what it is. Like some people, they look amazing. Like I can hop on cycle and look amazing. Now mm-hmm. somebody else, like let's say Flores takes it, he might put on size, but then he, he loses his like back shape or something. Like such weird things happen. And it's like, it's really hard to explain because there's no science behind it. There's no way to prove, you know, like <laughs> why why it happens yeah that's that scares me because like i'm i'm definitely not closed off completely from taking anything in the future but like i got my testosterone levels checked i think it was like what 461 which like is on the lower end of the of the average scale right i'm pretty sure yeah yeah for, for anything under 500 and you're under 25 is like it's considered pretty low now if you personally feel good let, let's say let's say how do i say this without sounding hella funny let's say your girlfriend was like dtf right and she came over yeah. and like you just couldn't keep it up. Like, shit like that starts happening often, and your mm-hmm. testosterone's low, then, like, that would be an issue. But right. if your testosterone's 200 or 300 and every other aspect is good, then you're fine because our body learns to adjust to whatever testosterone we have. So let's say mine was 300 for a couple years after cycling, right? My mm-hmm. body accepted that 300 as normal. So I could I could do anything, and I felt perfectly normal. But on, like, a, um, blood work, it's like, damn, your shit's low. Like, why is it so low? You should be tired. You should do this. You should have no sex drive. So – it doesn't matter what your number is. It's how your body uses it, pretty much. That's the simplest way of saying it. Yeah, because like when, when I was on my cut and I was, like, pretty lean, I would just struggle with, like, energy. Like, I felt like shit. I think my sleep. So, I like, that's why I got it tested. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I always thought maybe in the future TRT or something. You, I, feel like I'd, I feel like I'd benefit a little bit from it. If you ever want to discuss it, like, I, I, there's certain things I don't want to say on live, but I'll say, like, one thing because this might help you guys, especially if you're over 21. If you feel like you generally have, like, a low sex drive and, like, you have bad sleep, um, you feel like your, your body's a bit softer, even though you've been dieting, like, that could be a sign of high estrogen. But when you do get blood work checked, it's not about your total testosterone. You no, know, when you got your check, it said, like, whatever, 400, right? Like, that, mm-hmm. that, that number. So there's uh, total testosterone, there's free testosterone, there's estrogen, and there's sex-binding hormone. Each one of those has their own role in how our body reacts. So you could have 400 testosterone, but your estrogen's hella high but then your free testosterone is low and there's just different ways of it. And so I guess what I'm trying to say, like in simple terms is like, no matter what your number could be high as hell, but those other numbers could be out of whack. And like, that's why yeah. you have sex drive. So Damn, I wonder like, if my, my doctors got that information. You think they do? If they tested for like, cause I think the, the blood work sheets are like tests and estrogen. So no, I wonder if I could. My, my, my primary doctor is stupid as hell. I, I two, two clients on my team. I coach two doctors. Like I've had two co- doctors really? on my team for a while. So like if they were so smart, I'm, most doctors are smart. Specialists are smart primary doctors aren't the smartest people so if you went to like an endocrinologist or you went to a doctor that was um like specialized in testosterone replacement therapy such as like uh there's one in florida that all the body would go to it's called titan medical in florida so like here yeah so there's one everywhere so if you go to someone like that there those endocrinologists know testosterone they know the sex binding hormone they know what to look for but if you go to your primary they can be like all right Mm -hmm. um your testosterone's 400 you're good like that's all they know they don't know all the lying back yeah, because the doctor who did mine was some old ass guy. He was like, "You, you got muscle. You definitely don't have low tests." And I was like, "Put, I want to get a te- check." Like he ch- wasn't even to, like let me get it checked at first. I had to like force him to do it. Yeah, um, but yeah. That's so the rule, the rule, I can't. I don't know about your state. I don't know if it's nationwide. But I went to the doctor the other day because I always get blood work every six months just because like I enjoy doing it. So like I got mine checked, and the doctor's like, "Unless yours is under, what was it, two twenty one? It was some random ass numbers. Like unless it's under two twenty one." you can't qualify for uh, TRT. And I was like, bro, if my levels were 230, bro, I'd be on the floor. Okay. That's like 95 yeah. year old man. Like those numbers, they, they got to change, man. That's weird. That's crazy. Yeah. I think the place around here, I, I asked my, one of the gym owners that I go to, he, he showed me some place <laughs> that like, there's a, I think there's, I don't know, medical institute that does it. Yeah. Hey, I mean, you, you hooked up with Bradley Martin's brand, right? The clothing one. There, that's his brand, right? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, he owns a TRT clinic, bro. You know, we we need to intern there. You know, get some commission there. You know, go to go to his TRT clinic. Get some I might have to hit him up. Yeah, I got his number now. It's kind of lit. Bro, it's wild. All right. 
did you guys know what you were doing when you first started training? How did you get the information that you know now? Uh, I, my answer is for sure going to be different than Alex's, so I'll let you go first. So they pretty much said, like, how did you know how to start training and where did you get all your information that you know now about training? Pretty much. Um, so I started, I was really big on, like, the high volume bro split shit just because, like, I don't know, that's what a lot of people were doing. Um, and then I started watching a ton of, like, Bradley Martin I watched a lot, Callum Von Mauger, uh, yeah. Jeff Nippar, like, all of them, like, growing, like, when I first started. So I got, like, a lot of my, like, information and, like, I guess base knowledge off of, like, some of them. And then once I got, like, maybe, like, a year or two into lifting, then I maybe looked in a little bit more, like, the science back stuff a little bit to try to get, you know, away from the bro science. But um, I think a lot of it was trial and error. I did a bro split probably, though, for my first, like, two years of lifting, which I, I yeah. probably should have done. I would have taken that back, I think. Too much volume per day. Yeah, the, the volume's a killer, guys. Like, uh, I, I talked about this on my live this morning. So anybody who was on my, like, TikTok lives, I'll say it super quick, and then I'll answer the question. But the main issue I see, especially with people I'm coaching, anybody who's under 20, so typically I don't have a lot of people who are, like, 16 to 19, but I probably have about eight or nine total. Yeah. But the main thing they all had in common was they were doing too much volume. So mm -hmm. what that means is, like, let's say they were doing push-pull leg, because majority of them, most people start with push-pull leg. So – they were doing like 20 sets or 24 sets on Monday for push day. And then Thursday would come around and they do another 24 sets. Like yeah. that's, four, that's 48 sets of chest and shoulders combined. I'm like, there's no way, even if you're on gear, you're going to recover from that. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that's, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that beginners make is like the volume. I know it's hard. If you guys know nothing about it, you have no one to like ask, but it's like, if you feel like you've been in the gym for two hours, you're probably doing too much. Like, that's the simplest way to, you know, think, think about that's that. That's what I'm saying is crazy about Flores because he works out, like, twice a day for, like, two hours. He probably works, like, three hours, works out, like, three hours a day. Where then, like, the morning he does it fasted with no pre-workout. I'm like, how do you even do that? Like, the amount of volume he hits is, is ridiculous. But he, he's yeah. got a good physique. I don't know. He does eat a lot of food, but he eats kind of like shit. He told me he eats, like, hella M&Ms and cookies and shit. Yeah. So. But you, you got to – I don't know how many years you've been training. I, we're the same age. I think he's 26 also. So, I'm sure he's he been is. training, you know, equal in eight, nine years, whatever. So, it's like, once you have a good physique, guys, um, I don't want to say it's easy to maintain, but it's easy to maintain within reason. So, like, you're not going to shrink. You know, like, once your body has – once your body hits that, like, that homeostasis point – where it's like, all right, you know, for me, my my weight that I can maintain no matter what I do is 220. So I'm one. So I have to force feed to get to 240 at my biggest. But if I do not do anything and don't try, I get stuck at 220. Like, that's my middle weight. Now, for Flores, maybe his, I know he weighs less than me. So maybe his is like 190. So no matter what he does, maybe just stuck at 190. So whether he trains fasted, even though it's going to eat, you know, his muscle away, he's not going to shrink. Like, maybe his body just yeah. accepts that as, like, what it is. So that's uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, oh, um what do you what do you think about like muscle like potential like how long do you think it takes for someone to reach their genetic limit training style like, if, you would, if, you, if you if you would have asked me a couple years ago um basically because I, I went to school with like uh, i'm trying to make this not sound racist but like in college i went to i went to an all-black school right like my college all black people it was 90 percent yeah. black people so i was never really around black people growing up in my city it's like all white so when i went to a black college and i saw a lot of the athletes and like uh you know just people in the gym never trained before same grade as me freshman and I was like, I was putting on some muscle and I was just seeing dudes transform na naturally, just putting on absurd amount of muscles. Like, damn, bro. Like, how is this possible? And like, yeah. even like my one client, Theo, have you seen my, uh, my like shorter African client, the one who does bodybuilding? I did. You made a yeah. TikTok on him, didn't you? Yeah. So he, he's natural, bro. Like no matter anybody says he's been natural his entire life. I've seen his blood work. I've been his friend for years. I've coached him for a while. Crazy. And his testosterone is like what mine would be on testosterone placement therapy. Like his levels are so perfect. Everything about his blood work is perfect. It's so, like, you can't buy those genetics, man. Like, so his genetic potential, I don't know. He's been training at this point, like 10 years and he keeps getting bigger. But like, you know, maybe me or you, we train like five years and we like, we peak out like everything yeah. perfect. We hit it like five years of training hard. So there's no really way to say, you know, like there's, there's no way. But I think if you ever touch gear without being in the gym, like in the gym training hard, like knowing what you're doing under four to five years, I think you're stupid. That's just yeah. my honest opinion. Like I'm not, I have nothing against gear. It has its place in any sport, in any bodybuilding event. But if you use it without putting on muscle and learning how to train, you are going to grow when you hop on cycle, but you're going to have all these like messed up muscles like popping out in certain places because you don't know how to train. Yeah. And you see it all the time on TikTok. I don't know if you do or like Instagram is like, you'll see like a 20 year old, 21 year old on gear and they'll have these big ass delts, big ass traps, like no chest or just random things are popping because I, you. I, I see that. The, yeah. the proportions of it yeah. is different. 
Yeah, because you grow faster when you're on cycle. So if you don't know how to train and you're just doing these weird ass splits, hitting random muscle groups and not planning it, you're going to have big muscles like not fitting on your frame. And then you hop off cycle and you're like, well, shit, now I have these big ass chests, no arms or like whatever. Mm-hmm. So that that's one thing you do have to take in consideration when hopping on cycles. Like, you know, okay. Cody, do you ever plan on opening your own TRT clinic? I don't think so. I really feel like I'd have to have some sort of medical background. Like, yeah, I love reading medical books and like knowing some basic doctor shit, but I do not consider myself a doctor or know how to open something like that. No. Okay, hold on. If you see any questions, man, feel free. I'm, try- I'm trying to get to the trying to get the bottom. Some of the jerking off kill your testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> do do not bust any sort of nuts within like one hour of training. Like if you guys are gonna train at seven p.m. Do not hook up with a girlfriend and do whatever at like 6 p.m. Like do it after or do it early in the day. Like it does take a little bit of time for your body to like, you know, yeah. get back to that well, normal thing. I tried doing no fat for like a month. I'm not even gonna lie, dude. I swear a I month? had a month? energy. <laughs> I did it for a month. And I swear my energy, it was just over someone I was cutting. I swear my energy was better. Like I, I genuinely felt like a different like brain like it was my more mental clarity. Like I genuinely think like there's some like benefits to it, but like I don't think you should – I think it's different. Like, depends if you're doing no fat, like, yourself, or if you have, like, a woman in your life type. I don't think – if you yeah. have, like, the woman, I don't – I think it's actually, like, better for you. I mean, I, I don't know how your religion goes, in, like, in that category with your girlfriend, but I, I feel like if I told my girlfriend, like, I'm not going to hook up with you, that would end up badly. You know, like, it's yeah. it, it just, it just not going to – either that or she's going to cheat on you. You know, if she, if she agrees with it, bro, she's for sure cheating on you. So, I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know. So, it's definitely something you got to watch out for, but – I don't know if there's legit studies. Like I looked at it a little bit and I discussed it with that, uh, that one Carlos dude, you know, like the million follower doctor dude on or medical student, the dude on TikTok. You probably see him at some point, but he has all the weird like sex facts and the weird like facts. I discussed with him a little bit and like, he's like, no, (laughs) I was like, well, you're a doctor, not me. So there you go. All right. Do bodybuilders peak in their late thirties, early forties? It depends what time you start training guys. Um, if you started training at 16, then yeah, you're my, peak in like your mid 20s or late 20s but how if we're referring to strictly bodybuilding not not men's physique not classic like actual bodybuilding or 212 you can't really get to that level unless you've been training 5 10 15 years because of muscle maturity and if you don't know what muscle maturity means it means it means building dense muscle anybody can get big most bodybuilders are big most men's physique are big but it takes years upon years of working that same muscle to make it hard dry grainy and dense and uh hopefully that makes sense like alex That's- like, Here's, he might still be the same size plus a little bit more weight, but it'll look so much harder, denser. Yeah. yeah. That's what Flores was talking to me about because I was talking to – me and Flores play Call of Duty like every night, so we have some crazy bodybuilding talks, and he was like nah. telling me because I, I mean, hate my body. I'm like, damn, I need to take a cycle already. I need to stop being natural. And he was telling me like, dude, wait till you get like a little bit of muscle maturity or something when you're like – when I'm like his age or something, and then I'll see whether or not what I want to do. Yeah, because I mean I, I can only speak for myself if you work with me. Like if I was coaching you, that I wouldn't let you touch gear. The most I'd let you touch maybe some fat burners if we needed a small boost at the end, but it wouldn't be anything hormonal. Yeah. So, and if you ever plan to compete, so whether you hire me or whoever you work, it doesn't matter. If they try to push you on gear your first show, bro, you better run. Like that's yeah. so, it's such an easy way out because most coat, it's not that hard to coach someone on gear. It's, a, it's very smooth. Like you have to know some, but you don't need to know much. If you can coach a natural person, make them look absolutely sick, then you are a genius as a coach, at least in my opinion. You know, like you don't have faster metabolism. You don't have, you know, your body holding on to all these muscles, all this shit. But I think for you, if you're 20 now, I would definitely try and wait till at least 22, 23 to even consider it. That's just my opinion. You no, know, you could obviously do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but I would 100% do your first show or first two shows, whatever you're going to do naturally and see how you compete against people on gear. If you smoke them or if you get top three, then you know you have a good potential. Like I did my first show naturally. I got fifth out of 15. I was like, holy shit. What if I hop on? What am I gonna look like? Yeah, and I yeah. Came back, and then I got six first places and two overalls. So like, I know that if I could win, you know, naturally, imagine on gear, you're gonna smoke everybody. That's kind of the way it is. So don't ever do your first show on gear. That's uh, the best advice I can give. Right. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do when it comes to competing next year because I feel like I want to, but I think I don't know if there's any like good competitions near me. I think I'd have to go like out west, like west coast. Uh, you're gonna be in Texas. I'll be probably, yeah, around then. I think Flora said he might compete around then, which would be <clears throat> March. Oh, Chase is in here. I don't yeah, know. I don't know anything about, like, the whole, like, divisions. I don't know shit about that. I don't, I don't follow it really at all. Like, probably yeah. wish I should. It's like, I don't yeah. know shit about it. 
I really don't. Well, like, the different federations. What? Well, I mean, you're going to be in the NPC regardless. Don't compete in natural leagues. It's like you get no clout. You could win, you could win the show. You could turn pro naturally. Like, um, it's unfortunate, but you don't get shit. It's like I'm trying to think what you compare it to. It would be like if you're playing, like, professional baseball compared to semi-pro. Like, no one's yeah. going to know who you are. You're not going to get the clout. You're not going to get – Shout it out on Instagram, you know, Lucky Libra brand is not going to shout. It'll never happen. No one's going to care who you are. But when you go to the NPC, that's like, you know, that that's the league you want to be in. You start at the NPC, you start like the, the regional level. That means doing a show down your street or doing it, you know, whatever. Uh, you get top two in um, a regional show and open. Then you qualify for nationals. Then you go to nationals. You get top two in national. Now you're a pro. So I know it sounds simple, but mm. you have 50 guys in your class in all those shows along the way you have to get top two in. So it's, it's not as easy as what it sounds like, you know? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I got to figure out, do you think I would do better in, in uh, men, classic men's or men's physique? You think? I think when you, I don't want to say hop on gear. It's not, that's not what I'm trying to say, but I think when you are more mature and have more muscle, cause you have the structure, the structure is not the problem. You have the shape and structure. That's fine but you don't have enough mass to hang out, go against someone, let, let's say my age, who, you know, if I was still competing, my, my normal size, you just yeah. wouldn't have the size to compete against me because I'd be on stage over 200 pounds and you might be on stage at 170 or 160. Like, yeah, you look exactly. sick. You may have better abs, better shape, but it's like at the same time, um, fullness, size, all that's going to come into play. So I always encourage people, no matter what they want to do to start men's physique, you can go to – um. Uh, what is it called? It's called novice. So it's like they have a cl class of just beginners. Like you go there if you're a beginner, you're able to go to open against anybody. I wouldn't, um, but you would go to novice with all the beginners and like you know see how you do. Yeah. Um, I would have you do a novice men's physique, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I don't find when they're when the competition for that is. I do want to compete next year. I definitely do YouTube what, series out of that. What what I would do first? So two things. Uh, one, the Olympia is coming up in three weeks. I would for sure watch the whole live stream and just like see the best in the world and see which one you feel like. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I love classic. I love everything about classic. If I could ever be a pro, I'd want to be in classic. But I do not have the rhythm, the structure, or the hamstring genetics to be a pro classic. So I would never even risk it. I know yeah. that a good standing in place in men's physique, and like that's where I would do the best at. So it really depends, like, are you doing it for your happiness or are you doing it to place well and, like, make your sponsors happy because, like, you're a winner? It's so, like, that's something you really have to ask yourself because some people, they, they don't do it because they're good. They do it because they love it. And that's how they get second cause and third cause, which sucks. But, you know, I, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I don't know. I love the posing in, like, classic. Like, I can't – the men's physique posing is just, like, I love posing. Like, like exactly. good, you know what I mean? I don't have the size no, for they get no respect though men's physique gets zero respect like i get it they win and like you know they look good but like w no one considers bodybuilding unless you're in classic if your legs aren't shown you get zero respect in the fitness world yeah so i that's why i like classic it's like the closest you can get to being a bodybuilder without being like a 220 something pound dude you know unless you're yeah, yeah. but how do you think logan franklin's gonna do uh i have nothing against logan franklin i have nothing against anybody honestly i mean i know all of them to a certain extent not best friends but yeah. i know He's got a but dope chest, dope tricep. I don't – he can't – he shouldn't have called out, like, Steve Bum, though. Like, out of anybody, bro, he's like a – like, I think I think uh, Logan's going to place, like, 9, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in that, like, second, third call out, late second call out, early third call out. So, to call out someone who's, like, number one doesn't even make any sense. Like, if he was, like, number five or three and he's like, I'm going to win, or, like, Breon calling out Steve Bum, that makes sense. But how are you going to be, like, a number 12 or 15 competitor and, like, call out number one? It's such a big jump. Um, he has a dope, dope physique, though. So, I don't know. Uh, do you have any thoughts on Dylan McKinney getting his pro card? I don't know if you followed along with that. I saw that. I saw he, he competed. He got his pro card. Um, the Jersey Boys. The Jersey Juice Boys. Jersey Juice Boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey. I don't know. Where, where I don't follow you, too much. But. Where you're from, is there, like, any gym people? Not, like, influencers or anything, but, like, at your local gym and where you train at, is there anybody who, like, competes? Or anybody who aspires to be in that life, or that or is that is that not? I, I think I think so, yeah. But like, I don't know them much. I used to go to like a bodybuilder bodybuilder gym. Uh, it was like an old school bodybuilder gym. It was dope. They had, like all pictures all over the wall. There was a few guys there. Um, yeah. But dude, I don't know. I don't think like Maryland is like a big like bodybuilding like area like statewide. I don't know. Like I don't know any good competitions around here. Yeah, I, I can't. I couldn't even tell you. I heard of one, bro. I never even heard that state. <laughs> like, it's just not something <laughs> that like comes up. You know, dude, Maryland sucks, bro. I can't wait to get the hell out of here. If you 
if you ever want to be in like a bodybuilding state, because right, I, I have clients hit me up from like random states all the time. Like, oh, I want to compete here. I'm like, bro, I don't know if there's any shows in like South Carolina or North. Like, I, I don't know. Like, if you want to compete and you want to be like go against the best, you would go to California, Texas, Florida, or New York. Those are like the four or five states that are like the shit. Like that's Texas where- has been blowing up. Yeah. I feel like for fitness, yes. fitness wise. Okay, where are my weights, Dick? I don't know. He has a check mark, bro. It must be important. I don't know who that is. But... Oh, it was Chase. That's my friend. Oh, for sure. So... All right. Uh... <laughs> Somebody said something about muscle material. It was a good question. Hold on. Sorry, man. I'm looking for it. Uh... Oh, I lost where it went. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Looks his go. Hey. Right. I got to figure out when I'm going to compete, man. It'd be lit. Oh, I was thinking with the Soul House. We all, like, do a little, like, mini competition with the Soul House. We all, we all like, get sh- stupid shredded, do a little posing, little. That'd be little dope. Comp. Bro, I'll judge it. Let me live stream. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd get smoked. <laughs> I'd get smoked judge. by uh, Flores would smoke me from the back. So. One, one, one thing, though, because, I mean, I've, you, you've been pretty lean. I don't know how lean you've gotten, but the only thing I would say is when you coach natural people, when you are li- like a real natural, assuming you're not mm-hmm. like Keon or someone, you know, who's the best in the world, uh, you can look dope when you're bulking, get out great fullness, great muscle, whatever. You can grow pretty quick. But when you cut down, the first thing that goes is your strength, number one, and then you lose your fullness. Because that's you, what me and Flora's yeah, talking yeah. about. So when, you, when you're on gear, that's typically like – what because if I was committed, that's the only time I touch gear. You don't need gear the rest of the year. Like if you do, then you, you have a problem unless you're, you know, a giant pro. But um, it's what helps you hold on to your muscle. It helps you hold on to your lean muscle tissue when you're cutting down. It helps you with fullness, nitrogen retention. So it gives you that 3D puffy look. But even when you're yeah. cut down. So let's say I was like, yo, Alex, I want you to go do three zero carb days. Let me know what you look like on the third and fourth day. You would look like a fucking string bean. You'd be just flat. But yeah. on gear, you would look a little flat, but you'd still like, you'd burn off the fat and hold the muscle. So it's such a trippy process. And that's mm-hmm. how it's really easy for me to look at somebody like he's not natural. And people are like, well, he says he's natural. It's like, well, <laughs> it's, it's not that hard to tell. If he's two weeks out from a show looking full as a house, but he's 5% body fat. It's quite, it's what? quite easy to pick them out, you know. I don't know. What do you think? It's because I've been seeing a ton of people have been DMing me asking about Jermaine because Jermaine's about to compete, and yeah. me and Flores are saying like he's so he looks so full and he's strong as shit. Like he deadlifts like six hundred and something. And he was benching he, like three thirty five, easy. Yeah, out, two weeks he, out. He, he's coached by my boy Freddy, Freddy Mo. He's in uh, the gym San Diego, so like he's coached by an Olympian. You know that I, I went against, I went on stage against Freddy Mo, and he absolutely beat my ass. Like I was, I, I didn't want to be on stage when I saw him pumping up. Like, I want to go home, like. Oh. <laughs> I want to go home how good he was. Uh, He's got a crazy physique. But I don't know. Like, number one, he already has – he has amazing physiques. He has pro physiques. Sorry, he has pro genetics. But is he natural now? I don't know. Because I saw him, like, four months ago or so. Like, he looks sick. Like, he always had good genetics. But right now, being full and hard, it just looks different than what he was before. Like, he was just big and, like, a little shredded. But now he's getting harder and harder and looking fuller. Like, that doesn't add up to me personally. I can't vouch for it. But – Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I only know maybe like two or three people that I could vouch for that are completely natural and either turn pro or they place well at nationals. The other 95% or 99% are going to nationals unnatural because they want to win. You yeah, know, it, exactly. it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. But um, I, I saw Patrick say something like that. I want to go to nationals after training eight months. Yeah, I'm not I'm not clowning on anybody when I joke on that guys. Like I'm not talking about that one kid. I'm not talking about any of the kids. Like it's it's more than one. So many people went to that nationals uh, whatever, two weeks ago, whatever. And there's so many people going to nationals next weekend. And like, they have no muscle, they have no fullness. They've been competing under a year and they're going to drop a thousand on a coach. They're going to drop 500 on the show, tanning, travel. And I'm like, that's like two, three grand you blew and you're going to get last call outs. Like, why would you yeah. ever, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, what's up, Vladimir? So I got a bunch of my clients in here. Hopefully you got your friends in here too. Yeah, I've seen a few of them. Thoughts? What, do you, what are your thoughts on Tristan Lee? I, I know you don't know much about gear, but looking at it, what, what is your opinion? Would you look at him like that dude's natural? Or would you be like, no, he's on gear? I personally don't think he's natural. I know he's done like keto. Hasn't he done like keto for like years? He's been on keto for like the longest he- time. But um, he's just too damn veiny. Like there's no body fat on him. And he's strong as shit, dude. Like I know he's short, but yeah. like I, I don't know, dude. I don't, I, I would, if I had to bet my life on it, I would say he's not natural. Yeah, so I, I, I don't – I think he's not natural, but I don't think he's, like, blasting gear. Like, I don't think he's blasting, like, trending some crazy shit. Yeah. I think that a lot of influencers now – and I can only vouch for some that have either reached out to me or I know their coach. Like, 
typically yeah. coaches are the ones who are going to know because they're guiding everything. So like most okay. coaches won't reveal everything, but I'm sure if I asked them, I was like, yo, is that guy natural? He'd be like, no, like that, that's probably the most they'd tell me if I, if I genuinely asked. Yeah. So ma a majority of people that you guys think are natural, unfortunately they're not, they're not on hella gear. They are on SARMs. They are on clan. They are on a lot of, you know, minor drugs. I mean, I don't consider SARMs minor. I think it could kill you within months, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, a lot of people uh, are not natural in the sport. But that's any sport. Hey, do you uh, do you like Gymshark now? Ever since they've been like more mainstream and body oh, positive, hell no. they're, they're beta. They're, they're beta. I'm gonna burn all my foot. clothes, home. Shut up. Gymshark <laughs> is is trash. Gymshark is awful. I would never wear Gymshark ever again. Yeah, I, I I mean, I never bought it just because like it was. I don't know. I just I never liked Gymshark. I really like Dark Sport and I liked Aesthetic Revolution. Those were always my main two. But now, like, the thing I have was, like, I don't know. I really like the Olympia brand. I've always been an Olympia brand person. Their quality is, like, legit. And, like, no one even wears it. Like, I don't even think people know Olympia makes clothes. <laughs> but I was not into that. Now I can't even – I can't even wear Gymshark if I wanted to, really, because after, like, signing with with Raw Gear, if I, like, do any social media shit, like, it's got to be, like, wearing Raw Gear. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you a question about that, but I can't do it on live because you, you can't talk about contracts in public. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thoughts on Jalen being a natural. I mean, he's, he made great progress. Um, I talked to him. I gave him a couple like tips from my point of view, from like an outside point of view, from like a coaching point of view. And, uh, yeah. He did it responsibly. Uh, I think he's going to be fine. You know, I don't know. I do talk fast. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> this rat dog is loud as shit. What do you think is more different between new beginnings and muscle maturity? This question you were looking for. Oh, okay. Hold on. What do you think is more different I don't I don't know exactly like what is the difference between newbie games and muscle maturity like there's there's a lot there's, there's a huge difference they're not really they're not really related yeah. like like let's say Alex is 20 now and he started training at 16 his newbie games probably hit from like 16 to 19 you know like that that's his newbie game period where you put on all the mass now muscle maturity that could be by the time he turns 25 like every year he's gonna get denser he's gonna get harder and that's why a lot of bodybuilders, they come back better every year. So, like, let's – I know most of you guys are going to know who C-Bum is, right? You know, Chris Bumstead. Look at his physique last year. Look at it from the year before. And just look how much bigger, harder, drier he's getting every year. Like, that's mu the muscle maturity. And as long as his immune system issue doesn't get worse, which his is far worse than mine, so I don't even know how he's competing, to be honest. I didn't even know but, what it was. What does he have? Uh, it's I don't know the like the the medical name for what he has, but he has a specific um, it's like an autoimmune disease, and for him it affects like water retention and does something like he gets like cankles, like he gets like water retention in his like lower half, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of dangers that come with it, especially if it somehow affects his immune system. So, if you're wondering like what that has to do with bodybuilding, um, number one we have to be hard and dry on stage. That's that's unrelated, but when you get to about four weeks out and you're very dry and you know you're cutting water you're cutting carb whatever your body's very depleted you don't have a lot of nutrients and that alone makes you it makes you have a weaker immune system so imagine having a naturally weak uh, weaker immune system and now you're cutting down now it's even more weak and then you cut water in peak week and your body's depleted you're half dead like there's so many things that can happen negatively yeah. at bodybuilding so it's like that's why i'm considering like i still want to turn pro i still want to do it once i probably quit after i turn pro but it's like do i want to take 10 years off my life to have a pro card to not do anything with the pro card because of like what I have. So it's kind of, you know, you think it would, it would dead ass take 10 years. Oh, take, taking gear. It would take 10 years off your life. You said really, uh, it's within reason, depending on what you're taking. Damn. Yeah. I mean, it's so I'll, I'll tell you the dangerous. It's not just gear. It's like what, what in bodybuilding kills people. So number one, it's going to be high blood pressure. So that's from like pounding carbs in the off season, getting fat in the off season, not doing cardio. That alone, whether you're natural or not, can do harm to yourself. Mm -hmm. So really high, <clears throat> really high blood pressure makes your kidneys work too hard. It can actually affect your kidneys. Now you get into prep, right? So now you're on creatine. Now you're on a high protein diet. Now you're training your ass off. All those things affect your kidney. Mix that with a high blood pressure. Now your kidneys are working overtime. Now you add in oral steroids, you add in Trembolone, you add in all these other things that are liver, kidney toxic. Now it's working even harder. <laughs> so yeah. it's like your kidneys die so easy in bodybuilding, which is unfortunate because I love the sport more than anything. But that's, that's what I mean when it takes years off your life because you can only detox your kidneys so many times. We, don't, we only have two kidneys. You know, like, yeah, you can get a kidney transplant, but like, you know, yeah. you're not going to get on the list. So that's the part that kills people. And then the number one killer is the diuretics. So that's peak week. You take a diuretic Friday night, piss out all the water, and you're sleeping with no water in your system. You wake up, you take another diuretic, now you're on stage. 
So doing that process over and over again, year after year, that you're killing your kidneys, you're killing your body because you're flushing all the water, all the nutrients our body needs to live. And uh, it's, Man, that's, that's it's, a it's lot. so, so sorry, I uh, just told a whole life story, but I was trying to like be in depth. Cause I know a lot of people in here, you know, they're probably young and want to compete one day. So it's like, mm -hmm. you have to think long-term. If you would have asked me when I was 19, 20, like Alex, like six years ago, I would have been like, fuck no, give me that tram, bro. I'm trying to turn pro. But now yeah. knowing what I know and how drugs really affect you mentally, not like you're thinking, like your actual way, your brain and cognitive focus work. I understand what these drugs do to you. And it is very, very unforgiving would would be the word so ho hopefully that didn't scare you away from trying trend but you know that's uh... <laughs> <laughs> i was talking to flores about that shit last night we were like we're here for a good time not a long time that's what he said <laughs> yeah. i mean that is true but if you get sick on anabolics or you get sick on something that's liver kidney toxic or you have high blood pressure uh sometimes it'll just ruin your weight like your quality of life like you're not gonna die yeah. Like your quality of life will just be bad. So imagine just feeling like shit for the rest of your life because you compete in 10 shows or whatever, compete for a couple of years. Yeah. One of the guys that I've always looked up to in the industry, like Art Artemis Dolgan, if you know him, I know he if, blasted. If he's like, he was like the golden aesthetic CEO. He blasted so many steroids for, for a decent amount of time. He's been on TRT now for a, for a decent while, but he's like, his, I don't know how to explain it, but he does probably like six hours of like activity a day. He like trains, he boxes, he does all this high intensity work. And like yeah. he surprisingly seems like he has so such good cardiovascular health for taking so much gear over the years. I was surprised like seeing that. Maybe it's a TRT just kicking in like crazy or Yeah. So TRT is gonna help him, but I think the main thing is like just because how do I say it? There there's a smart way and there's a wrong way to take gear. Similar to any, you know, medication, any kind of prescription drug. Like if you abuse it. So I think that the oils are what's really killing people. So if I did have a client on gear, I would try to stick with the majority of oils and like maybe a few or orals at the end. So, you know, yeah. in the first half and then what a small amount of orals. Now the problem is people who are like 16, 17, 18, they don't have access to it. They're scared of needles, right? Like everybody's scared of needles. So, needles. so they start taking SARMs, which are ridiculously toxic to your body and everybody thinks they're not. And they're like, well, I'm going to go take some of these D-ball, this Anavar, whatever it's oral. It's fine. It's not toxic. And they continue that process over and over again. And overall, oh, and then they don't take their, their specific liver, kidney, organ detoxing roots that help your body cleanse it. And most people don't know what those are. So go cop that anabolic ebook and go live. But either way, so uh, they don't know what those are. So just year after year, man, it just pounds your body. So I guess that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Don't, don't take SARMs because I saw someone say, what do you think about SARMs? Don't, don't do it. I have my blood work. I have a I have a book about anything I've ever taken or my clients and I log it, their blood work, how it happened, effects, strength, whatever. So I know what really happens when people take cycles, guys. It's not, it's not a, I don't know. I don't, that's all I really have to say. It's not forgiving at all. Anthony Mantello, dude, Anthony's got great shape. He's one of those people that I think he's rushing to turn, like, I think he wants to, he'd be the youngest pro, right? Is that, is that it? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay, so he'd be the youngest pro. So I think he just wants that on his resume. But the problem is, if he hopped on, you know, and he turns pro, he's down here. Can you imagine him trying to step against, like, um, I don't know, a top, a top 10 or top 20 in the world Olympia? Like, he's, no, he's like, 10 years away from getting there. Yeah. So I think if he did turn pro, like, he's almost shooting himself in the foot because he has, like, five years of growing before he can even place top five at a pro show. So that's why I try to tell my clients, like my client, Brett, like he could have turned pro last year if he wanted to, but he wants to turn pro and step off nationals and go straight into a pro show after. Like that is his dream. Yeah. So that's what I'd much rather have because no one, everybody's going to forget about you the second you turn pro and then you go to a pro show and you get last place for three years. Like what, what would you do that for? So yeah. that that's my just advice to the, the Anthony kid that I, I don't know him personally. I just know that he's smaller and he's super aesthetic, but no one cares if you're aesthetic if you're 40 pounds under your stage weight of someone else. So I guess that's the biggest problem in my opinion. Someone said something about Dylan McKenna turning pro after two shows. I always thought Dylan McKenna, like, I don't know when he hopped on gear. He definitely hopped on gear, right? He's not natural, right? He, yeah, no, he's not natural. But um, that doesn't count, though. That, um, sorry, sorry, you could finish that. I'll say it after. But I just, I never thought, like, his physique was, like, 
I don't know, pleasing to me. I never thought it was crazy. I mean, he's got a good physique, but to me, I don't know. I didn't know he'd win a pro card that, that easily, that quick. Yeah, so branching off to what you said, um, and whoever said, like, the two shows, so there's different There's different levels, guys. Like, there's some people who legit have been training their ass off, like pro bodybuilders, you know, cutting, bulking year after year, right, five, six years. So I don't know how old he is, but I know he's, like, 20-something. So he's been doing it for years. So that's not the same as if someone trained one year and they did a show. Like, that show doesn't count. They're, they're, they're nobody. They're just a beginner. Yeah. But if you're a freak and you've been training your ass off for five years, they do your first show and you look absolutely amazing. Like, that, that's why he turned pro his second show, because he had so much potential after training so many years. So people mix up the amount of shows with, like, experience, and they don't have anything to do with each other. You know, like, they're not related. Some of these comments are geeking. Like, someone said I injected, what do you say, I injected SARMs into my shit? Damn, bro. Veins. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not reading them. I read a few, but I'm just not going to comment oh on them. Oh, my God. Alex, you might try to kiss me by the squat rack. <laughs> Wait, what? I, 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 do have, I do have a question for you because I saw someone ask it. So what, how do you feel about Greg Doucette? Are you, are you a Greg fan or are you an anti-Greg? Are you in the middle? How, how do you feel I, about General. I'm probably in the middle. Like, I never I never really was big on watching him. I probably watched a few of his videos. I know that he was with Rise, and he had some shit, like, issues with Rise. Um, but I never – like, I'm not really a big person in watching, like, other influencers. After, like, probably this past year, I kind of just focus on doing my own, like, influencer stuff. Like, I'll, like, I'll support, like, my boys. But, like, I don't really pay attention to, like, any other thing going on in the fitness industry. So, like, I, I, I'm probably, like – very in the middle with it like i think he's a cool guy i think he's funny and stuff he's got a lot of good content yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah i don't know i feel like he's very um like too what's the, i don't know what the word stubborn i feel like he's very stubborn i think with his natty or not like he's very like he thinks he's right no matter what he says yeah because i comment on every once in a while and i get it just pisses people off because I, I don't hate greg i have nothing against greg but so i'm 26 i started watching greg when i was like 21 so let, let's just say 2015, somewhere somewhere around that. Like, I started watching Greg 2015 to, like, 2017. Like, I was really into his content. I loved all his videos. I watched it weekly. And he, like, legit would post one video, like, every two weeks. So it was something to look forward to. But he would, like, document his preps, talk about what to eat, talk about whatever. But he didn't do his weird-ass voice. He didn't do, like, these weird skits. Like, it was legit mm -hmm. just straight-up monotone, like, information, which most people thought was annoying as hell. But, like, it was very great information. And I didn't yeah. have my degree yet. And I was like, bro, I love this dude. And then, like, he started changing, like, 2018, 2019. I was like, bro, what's, ha what's happening? Like, what, what is – Healing to more people, yeah. yeah. Just the, so I was like, oh, I, I stopped watching him years ago just because, like, it just wasn't interesting to me anymore. Yeah, I don't believe in that man-gaining bullshit either. I think that stuff is so stupid. I get so much people hitting me up and, like, telling me, like, bro, you shouldn't even – you shouldn't be in a – you know, a, I'm, like, 300 calorie surplus something right now. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, bro, you don't need to be – you can just eat maintenance and then train hard and you'll be gaining, like, something. Like, you idiot. Like, you need to – I hate the whole main main game bullshit. I don't believe in that. Yeah. So the two things that I actually just like about him, like I don't know if it's as a person or just at least, but it's like his two sayings, man, they just bother the shit out of me because they hurt so many people. So main gaining is number one, like you said. And the second one is training harder than last time. They're both the two most ridiculous claims and they both have no science like science behind it. And being that we have the same degree and like I don't know if mine's newer than his or whatever, we have the same damn degree. So I know what we learned our masters. And we did not yeah. learn that. We didn't learn either of that. So even if you were working with me, like I would guarantee I'd have you in like a five to 700 calorie surplus minimum bulking. Mm -hmm. And people see what he says and they're like, yo, you need to like be in a hundred calorie surplus or maintain, like you're going to stay small forever. Like what, what does that even mean? The only people that main gaining would genuinely work for and like you'd put on quality muscle would be right. you're like 16, 17, 18, like it's your first year of training because you're going to grow no matter what you do. And people think that, like, that's the right way. But someone like you or me who have more muscle, more muscle maturity, we can't main gain. We would shrink. If we even had, yeah. like, 100 calories under our maintenance, we would shrink. So I, I don't know. That, that's the only thing I dislike about him. Um, just because, like, some of the smartest people in the world, especially when he did that interview with uh, Israel, whatever. And, like, I, I think Israel was being a dick to him. He definitely didn't need to do that much to him. But, like, he had a point. Like, he's like, you can't give me a scientific study. You can't give me whatever. You can't do this. Like, you just say these random phrases and you have no science behind it. It's like, yes, my followers are morons. And I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't even see that. That's yeah. funny as shit. I'll, I'll send it to you. It's actually a really educational thing. Because, like, yeah, yeah. my Israel is, like, someone that I would personally look up to. Like, that's someone that I would actually watch because he's that damn smart. Like, I don't watch many people because I want to listen, but he's this that damn smart. And I was like, bro, the second he goes head-to-head to, head to Greg, this is not going to end pretty. It's, it's not, it's not going to happen. Bro, what are these comments right now? <laughs> I don't know, dude. All right.
All right, hold on. I only got a couple more questions. Uh, how much longer do you have? Do you want to chill for like another 10 minutes? I don't want to have you on here like forever. I'm, I'm whatever. You're good. That's all right, chill. All right, yeah, we'll finish through the questions at maybe like 20 minutes. All right. Uh, okay, when you use pre workout, um, do you prefer non stim or stim? And how many times a week do you typically take pre workout? Uh, I used to always take non stim until I started my first like actual legit cut this year. And then I started taking like an actual stim because I kind of needed it. And now I'm hooked on stim. So I take it every day when I work out. How, how much caffeine's in it? Like a 300 or is it like 500? The, the rise one's 370, I think. 370. Uh, damn. That'll hit. <laughs> That'll I'll say, yeah. I, the ones I did, usually 300 to 400. At first, I was taking it lower and then this rise. So he hit me though. It's, it's good, dude. It's got like this, like the nitrates or whatever in it. And then I take like citrulline on the side. Oh. How's the uh, how's the crash though? Because I know anything over like three fifty, it's kind of like once you're done, it kind of like. I don't think caffeine down. affects me. Like I literally had my pre workout today, and I just drank a cup of coffee during this. Like, I I really don't have a crash until like I can have my pre workout right before I go to sleep, and like go have it lift and go to sleep, and I'm fine. Like it really doesn't. I don't think it affects me much. Yeah, yeah. no. It's I mean, if I look you know, for the pump products in it. Because when I was competing, like, I was genuinely depleted. depleted. Like, I feel kind of depleted now, but it's like, I'm not prepping for anything. I'm doing it for fun, just for, you know, gathering some data. But it's like, if I was genuinely prepping, I was trying my ass off, then, yeah, I'd probably live off stims. If it doesn't have 300 milligrams, it's not even going to wake me up, you know? Mm -hmm. like, uh, okay. Oh, there's two questions. Uh, the first one was, what are your thoughts on power building? I know he asked that, like, seven times, so I don't want to, you know, leave him hanging. But do you ever, do you ever uh -huh. or do you just straight up, like, hypertrophy train? I'm big on hypertrophy. I've been doing a little bit more strength training just the past like month just for fun, just to try it out. But yeah, I'm big hypertrophy time retention training, like you know, that like that. I don't know. When you do the powerlifting movements, do you do it the first like one or two exercises? Like let's say for leg day, do you typically do it for like squats and that's it, and the rest is kind of like hypertrophy in the isolation? Yeah, for strength purposes, yeah. For like, what do you mean for like my training so, style? Usually, yeah, I'll do it yeah. So style. when you when you said you do a little bit of strength training, like, is it just one exercise that you kind of treat like a powerlifting movement? Is that is that what you mean? I'll do like two, I'll okay. do like two, and I'll do like lower rep. Like I'll focus more on like maybe or maybe I'll do like light and weight, do like explosiveness and shit, and then I don't know. God, focusing my form more. Yeah, so if I had to give you guys an example, like when power building is like acceptable, or, like the best time, I'd say in the off season. Because if you're in the off-season, I'm talking about off-season for bodybuilding and just bulking. But it's like, that's the time where you're the most strong. You're going to have the food. You're going to have everything to recover. So if I was going to do it, I'd kind of do it similar to Alex. Let's say a leg day. I would do, like, my squats or whatever, like, super power, maybe, like, a 5x5 five five or, you know, 4x8, whatever, just heavy. Um, and then everything else would kind of be a little more hypertrophy. So I usually do my first set uh, – sorry, my first exercise more power-based in the off-season. But in prep, I don't, I don't do it. I don't lift heavy like that. It's just too risky. Joey swole. He blocked me in all accounts. I don't. Damn. I don't, yeah, I don't. I didn't even say anything to him. I just woke up one day. I was blocked. Blocked. It's a good right. non-stem free. All right. My pre is Austrian. Okay. Okay. What's the What's the most amount of calories you've ever had in a bulk that you were consistently able to eat every day? I never. I usually don't count when I'm bulking because I kind of just like eat when I'm hungry. Yeah. Um. You I get, would. We need to work on that. <laughs> yeah, go. yeah. I only count when I cut, dude. I gotta work on. I definitely need. That's something I need to work on. If I had to guess, I'd say like maybe like thirty four hundred. I was eating thirty okay. three hundred when I was like dirty bulking in high school, probably. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so right now, what are you doing? You said you're only like three hundred calories over your maintenance. So I would say like I'm pretty sure I'm eating around like uh like three thousand right now. I would say if oh. I had to like guess it, and I think that's probably around. I feel like my maintenance is like 2,700 <clears throat> based on how my cut went. And um, because I'll track every once in a while, but I get lazy. I need to get back on it. I was like tracking every day and then like I got sick. I had COVID and I stopped tracking and I just never got back to it. So. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I, forgot, I forgot you had COVID. You tested positive, huh? It wasn't just the flu. It was like legit COVID. It was legit COVID, yeah. Fuck. And then I had to get my wisdom teeth pulled right after that. So. Oh, God yeah. damn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought my year was rough, bro. You had a rough week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, that shit sucked, dude. I, I was – it messed my bulk up a bit. I was eating – like, I had to eat very specific foods. It was terrible. Damn. So, so remember when I told you, like, I was out of commission 2019, right? Like, no, nothing went right? 
So I got, I got my wisdom teeth taken out, right? And the oh. nurse or whoever the dentist was like, oh, you told me about yeah, there, there's a there's a 1.5% chance that I'm ever going to nick a nerve and you're going to lose your like feeling in your face. And I was like, hell yeah, that's good odds. I wake up I'm like, damn, my shit's numb. A month later, yo, my shit's numb. Two months later, it's numb. And I was like, yo, is this supposed to go away? She's like, yeah, I should have gone away after week one. I was like, what? She's oh. like, all right, I sorry, I nicked a nerve. You're a 1%. I was like, awesome, bro. My year can't get any better. <laughs> you know, it just can't. Oh. Damn. All right. Uh, what would you consider an uh, unnecessary supplement? So it could be like, you know, pre-workout. It could be vitamins. Do you consider something unnecessary or something that you don't believe in? I don't know. I mean, I probably take unnecessary supplements, which I probably know, like, I don't need, but like, I just, I just, I'm always taking them. Um, I don't know. My, I don't know. My like main stuff I take is I'm big on like, I take like vitamin D3, my multi way, BCAAs while I lift. Uh, some glutamine. I'm not really big on creatine. I never was big on creatine. I probably could though. Um, yes. Ashwagandha I take for like stress, cortisol. Yeah, it works well. Um, that's that's all. I don't really know what. I'm th- I can't think of anything. Maybe ZMAs. Yeah. So er- everything he listed, guys, is pretty legit. So just bringing it back like in order. BCAs I do like. Not when you're bulking, it's kind of whatever. I still do it, but if it's not mandatory. But when you're cutting, yes, I think it's very essential when you're doing like fasted workouts. Or you're training hard, or you're in an anti-catabolic. Yeah, because like yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could go catabolic when you're bulking too. You know, if you don't have your quality meal while you're, you know, whatever pre-workout or whatever, like, you go catabolic, training your ass off. So a lot of my clients I have them do intra-workout carbs uh, with amino. So I make sure that they never go catabolic. They're straight up anabolic the entire time. Um, other vitamins that actually work: get a quality multivitamin, no matter who you are, girl, guy. Do not take a men's one a day. Take a quality multivitamin. It's like anywhere between two and 10 pills, whatever it is. Take a vitamin C. Take a vitamin D as in dog if you do not get a lot of sun. Unless you guys live in like sunny ass Florida, Texas, whatever, like you're going to need a vitamin D if you're training and yeah, you're not getting a lot of sun. So that, that, that's pretty much all I had to say about that. Uh, I, I know you don't like bodybuilding a shit ton or you follow along, but between Sebum and Breon, somebody asked that. They said, How do you feel about Sebum versus Breon? I know, I know both of them. I've always, I liked Sebum. Like, what, am I saying who would win? Yeah, between those two, not like as a person. Like, who, who do you think is gonna win for the Olympia? Uh, um, I know a lot. Aren't a lot of people trying to say Breon? Yeah. I, I think. I mean, I want Sebum to win, but I feel like Breon's gonna win. Yeah, I, I think that because with the immune whatever shit that Sebum has, he can't take trend. And I'm not saying steroids mm-hmm. make your physique. But certain steroids give you a physique that things – how do I say it? Certain steroids give your body a look that is not achievable by other steroids. And Trend just gives you this weird, grainy, 3D, puffy look that's, like, not reachable by any other drug. And that's probably why Breon looks like an absolute monster right now. And Sebum does too. But his conditioning with um, Breon is just – they're just not there yeah. on this level. They're not, they're not close. But if we're talking about looking classic, then, yeah. Sebum is way more classic, way, way more classic than Breon. I think Breon deserves to be in 212, but he says that he enjoys sucking this down, and I don't think he's going to, you know. No, Sebum would never take trend because he would die at, like, 30. So no one cares if you're Mr. Olympia if you're dead. So, you know, I, he, he knows better. All right, there's only, like, a couple more questions I want to get through super quick. Uh, who is your all-time favorite Instagram bodybuilder or influencer or someone that you want to look up to or someone that, like, you aspire to be like? Bodybuilder Frank Sane. Frank Sane's probably my top. Okay, Frank, okay. Yeah. I, 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 you know, from the poses you do, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Do you have an influencer that, like, you like watching their content or that you wish you were similar to them or, like, you want to make it like them? Or it's just kind of like whatever. Seth, you... Seth Frose, I think, is how you say it. I, I love his, his vibe. I love his, like, ice watch, his motivational things. That, that's the big-ass lumberjack dude, right, with the beard? Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah I love him. I, that's probably – if I watch YouTube videos or if I watch someone, usually probably would be him. Callum Von Mager was also one – when I started lifting, was a big one for me too. Yeah, when, when, he, used to, when he used to be with Karina, that, whatever year that was, like, he was mm-hmm. great. Like, I used to watch him all the time. Yeah. All right. Okay. Last three questions. When and why did you start TikTok? Uh, I had a lot of people in my, my work I was working at and friends who were like, dude, you should make a TikTok. You probably could blow up. So yeah. I made one and like, it was shit. I wasn't getting nothing for like a little bit. And then I started like really grinding on it. started getting a little bit of traction. And then yeah. I told my dad I was going to stop going to work for a month. This was in July. And I was like, I was, I'm going to focus on, on content and yeah. start taking off. So 
damn. So people how, were just how, telling me they were like, you should put it out. You should put your information out. So I was like, yeah, bet. Bro, tick TikTok's so weird, man. Like, I, I feel like how do I say this? There are some people I know that genuinely put hella effort in their videos and they flop. But mm -hmm. then like, it's stupid. You, you could go in your room and just like see some random comment, and be like, you know, what? I'm gonna reply to that, and that should uh -huh. get thousand views. So it's I crazy. Like, <laughs> The times that I put zero effort into anything, like the video blows up. But like when I when I actually research something, they want to talk about a topic that like people need to learn. No one cares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird. It's uh, it's whack. It makes no sense. Oh uh, well, Fr free money on the creator fund, so it's all good. Oh yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, la last question I have on paper, and then if we want to answer any final ones there. But um, what do you think is the biggest myth in the fitness industry or in bodybuilding in general? What what do you feel is like a myth? Mm, damn a myth in the industry i don't know i mean if i can't like like something fake would be like all the damn fake natties and shit yeah but, like myth myth wise like i don't know like what i don't know what you mean by a myth either do i i just wrote down the question <laughs> they just said yeah, like yeah. what i just like this fakeness dude there's so much fakeness people just post like i know a lot of influencers i follow who post these stupid ass workouts them doing like these weird like Instead of doing like a barbell bench press and do some extra shit, you know what I mean? I know that they're doing it just for content. They'll do one yeah. set of it and they'll probably go do an actual barbell bench, but they won't like film it. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of fakeness just to get content, just to get people, you know, to, to like and save their shit. And that's what I don't like. I like being very transparent. So I'm, that's what I'm trying to change up. Yeah. So I, I agree with all that for sure. Okay. We're going to, we're going to ignore the dick size questions. Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right. But uh, what I was going to say is, like, one of my good friends, like, he's a top 10 in Olympia for men's physique. Absolute freak. He's, he's one of the top 10, believe it or not. I can't say who he is. But he was just telling me, like, people don't care if you're bulking. Like, they don't care what you look like. If you don't look absolutely shredded, you're around, you're going to get no likes, you're going to get no engagement. So he said the fakest thing in his opinion, like, when we always just talk at the time, is, like, he said all him and his friends or competitor, whatever friends, they, like, will prep for the show, right? Let's say for the Olympia, right? And they yeah. have thousands upon thousands of videos pictures what sorry hundreds not thousands but hundreds of pictures videos lined up and they will just post that one picture every other day for the rest of the year until the next olympia because they look like shit the other you know eight months of the year not shit but like shit on social media so like they have hundreds of pictures from just the same day they'll take hundreds of pictures in like the same week and like get on that. they'll, they'll just that. post all that so i mean i mean it's kind of a good idea right no one cares if you're fat they want to see you shredded oh that's such facts. Yeah, I, I should have done that. When I go down to see Joe and Zay, I know Joe's going to make me feel fat as shit. I'm wearing a stringer the whole damn time. Hell I'm wearing yeah. a white beater stringer. For Next sure. Joe. Oh, we got Flores fit in the chat, too. Right, Raj, Raj, we're ending. It's fine. It's, it's cool, bro. It's fine. Don't, don't yeah, get Flores, your... you missed it, fake friend. So right. Like, I'll, I'll carry him in Call of Duty probably later. Right. I got Flores, and who's the other guy? Who's the men's physique kid? I forget. Weston, is that how you pronounce his name? Weston Garland, yeah. Yeah, so Flores and Weston, those are going to be the two next people I'm going to, you know, hop on the live, so you guys want to watch that. But um, if you guys have a final question, then your final questions, you know, we're going to go through this, and uh, I don't want to keep Alex here all night. I still got to go train some legs in a second, go pound some pre-workout, so I got to go do that. Uh, we're not going to reveal our penis sizes now. We're not going to do it. <laughs> Lord, oh, I mean, I got, I got a question. I guess random people here might meet. How, how did you meet your girlfriend? I didn't, like, follow along. I was I, I, <laughs> on her for, for my free page, and I saw you with us. Like, damn, bro, small world, bro. <laughs> so Joe, Riser no, he Fit. he doesn't tell the whole story. She's here. He doesn't tell the uh, whole story. Riser Fit sent me a TikTok of her. And he was like, how does she post this shit of her shaking her, you know? And he and Riser was like, how can she post this shit? But my account gets banned because Riser's account got banned a little while ago. Yeah, I, was yeah. like, bro, I was like, bro, that's so messed up. I'm going to stitch it. And she didn't have the stitches on, so I screen recorded it. I yeah. was like, how can women post shit like this? And then I get all my videos on review, take it down. Because I've been getting a ton taken down lately, too. And it's been pissing me off, bro. He, he, me and Jalen talk about that shit all the time. Like, no matter what he does, bro, his quad show is done. He's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's awful but yeah so she she followed me on instagram and tiktok after i made no, that no i already commented. followed him because i already followed you because you were dating what you were with one of my friends okay that's what's funny <laughs> i i was i was low-key with like her like one of her like close friends so she knew me but i didn't know her yeah, yeah. but i found her through riser but she already knew who i was because like one of her friends i was like messing with for a little bit so small world bro small world i like it oh yeah what what are the chances you guys even live in the same? Do you guys live in the same city or same like? She's household? she's like forty five minutes away. She's in D C. and I'm in like I'm near Baltimore. It's a little rat dog. It's ugly ass thing. <laughs> I'm the ugliest dog I've seen in my life. Heard up, but yeah. 
I, I was I was dying though. So I sorry I forgot what your girlfriend's name, but I was I remember I was on the free bro, page yeah. and like I saw that one video that I know what you're talking about. I was like, bro, how is this how is this okay? Like how did they post it? <laughs> and then I saw you post like well, no now. way, Alex is dating her now. It's good. I don't know. It's always... Girl, girls got life on easy mode, man. Dude, it's crazy. It's bro, crazy. okay. Getting famous on I'm, TikTok. I'm, if me or you went in a bikini and shook some ass, bro, I'm at, imagine. I mean, oh, I dude. wish you would. I might it do might, that. I might. No, it might go viral. To be honest, dude. I hope it would. For real. I do edit. It. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna finish up here. Oh man, Th thank you for hopping on my show, and I definitely want you to, you know, get your last minute to say anything you want to say. Shout out to any of your sponsors, anything like that. But either way. Oh, thank you all for watching. Y'all are y'all are awesome. I've been getting so much support lately on all my socials. It's been unreal. Getting with Raw Gear and Rise. So things are going up. Soul House coming out soon. Be out there probably early spring, I'm thinking. We'll be going out to Dallas. So that's where it's gonna be. So I'm hyped for that. And then Cody, you got you gotta um gotta get you to be my coach when I compete next year. So Hey, I'll be here, bro. As long as I don't get another hundred inquiries per day, like I'll have some room to take you on, bro. I got no complaints. <laughs> TikTok's powerful. But now, nah, bro, I definitely look forward to coaching you if it does happen. I mm -hmm. think that we could definitely uh, document that, and that would probably be some, like, Anthony, whatever his name is, like, quality content, bro. That shit, would that shit would blow up on both our ends. So I'm down for it. We could discuss in the future. Until then, I highly suggest you start force feeding, you know. So until then, just keep force feeding. That's all I was going to say. You think? Yeah, you you got you got, long, uh, you, you got a you got a long ways to go, bro. Cause like you hit me up and we're like, yo, we got 16 weeks out. I'm like, well, you don't have enough mass, bro. Like, what are we gonna cut? Yeah. You know, like you already have abs now. You know, like you you need a solid like 15, 20 pounds on your frame, bro. Uh I'm just Jeez, I know I do need to. It's just so big with all the content shit going on, but I I probably do need to. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, just hit me up when we're not on live and I'll discuss it with you. And I'll just tell you, you know, just get bigger. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, if you don't follow me, follow me. If you don't go follow Alex, go follow him. And uh, maybe we'll do this again. Maybe I'll be his coach when it happens. Who yeah, knows? All right. Yeah. All right, man. Have a good night. All right, man. You too, man. God bless. Have a good one. All right.